Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. I am so excited to be filming today. It is Friday night. I'm actually sitting here with a bit of wine. I am drinking a French wine. That's not what we're here to talk about. I am gonna talk about these, the Wii makeup palettes. And I got these a while ago and I filmed a, a first impression on these and I didn't like the footage. So, and there was parts of things, no, there were parts of, <laughs> there were several parts of the video that I didn't like. I didn't like how the look came out, so I learned some things that I'm gonna share with you. I didn't like how the footage was. Uh, I have changed some things with my settings. Today, for example, it's really dark outside because this is Friday night. I just came home from work, well, just like, an hour ago? No, that's not true. An hour and a half ago, I went to buy some wine as well. <laughs> and it's dark outside, so I'm trying to film like this right now. I am actually buying a new lens for my camera soon, so I'm trying out some different angles, seeing what fits me. And do you see my... I even, I even have the beauty guru... Beauty guru... <laughs> actually just burn those because one of them is mahogany and one of them is saffron and together they are the most amazing smell so that's why I actually like them and also if you didn't know that having lights in the back of your video helps the camera to bring out the best in like colors and focus and stuff like that that's why you see a lot of youtubers having something lit in the background lit in the background is that how you say it sounds like my my decor is drunk that's not what I'm trying to say <laughs> it helps with the camera quality that's what I'm trying to say. Anyways, so I filmed that video and I didn't like the camera quality, I didn't like the video quality, I didn't like the look and I also didn't like my hair and I was just being annoyed by so many things so I thought instead, scrap that, so actually, oh I said itchy, I actually threw that footage away and now I'm filming again. So I have filmed this look, I filmed this look with the uh, the palette that I did myself, my custom palette, I'm gonna get into this and I also filmed the look with this one, which is the pre-made palette that I bought, which is called Boreal Light. So, I, there's gonna be two looks in this video. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to tell you. So I'm gonna go quickly and tell you my thoughts about this palette so far. I've used them four times, once uh, on the first like impression that I scrapped and also, but I actually did film another video wearing that look after, but I didn't really... But that video is still going up, but the look is not. Anyways, and then I've used it once off camera just to see like what went wrong the first time and now I'm filming this which is the second look which is the fourth time I'm using the palace. Does this make any sense? I just wanted to give you some thoughts about this uh, brand. We Makeup is a new brand, it is Italian based and the shadows are made in Italy. Uh, the shadows come in different kinds of structures. I will put a picture here on the site so you can see how the site looks if you decide to do your custom palette. They do have some pre-made palettes, they have a lot of pre-made palettes. I bought one of the pre-made palettes, this is Burea Lights, and then I made my own palette with the thing that you see on the site and I picked these colors and I picked these colors because I wanted I wanted to have a fall scheme. I wanted to make a fall palette. That's also why this is mixed with two more neutral shades. There's one khaki green here and there is one like muted peach. I love having a peach or a pink in a crease when I'm doing berry looks so that's why I put it together with these two berries. I'm gonna show you some swatches in a bit. When you do a pre-made palette they are 34 euros and when you want to make your palette yourself a custom palette is 39 euros. So it's a couple of more euros if you want to design them yourself but I thought I wanted to try both of them. Either way you order them you're gonna get them in a box and the shadows are not going to be in the palette. You see on the back it has some holes so you actually put the shadows in the palette yourself and has a mirror and so the palette comes empty and then the shadow comes and you can you can actually put them in any way you want to even this pre-made palette you can put them in a totally different order if you want to. I just decided to put it in the same order as they had it on the site. When you order a pre-made palette you can see what shades they choose. Shows grammar out the window. You can see what shades are in the pre-made palette so you don't end up buying any of the shades because all of the shades in the pre-made palettes are also available as singles so you don't end up buying any doubles and I think that that is so good. But we makeup needs to put the shade names on the back of the pants because that is that is not it right now. We makeup you need to do that. You need to have if you're going to do palettes like this where you can poke them out and just rearrange them Look at me, us beauty nerds, we really need the name of the eyeshadow, like the number of the eyeshadow on the back of the palette. 
we need that but I'm gonna put the names of the shadows that I ordered down in the description box and it's gonna be in the order that they are appearing in the pen so it's gonna be like one two three four five six like it's gonna be like that I'm gonna call it the Burial Light and the custom like my custom palette how do I feel about the formula because these are not like affordable palettes and I'm guessing that if you're from US or from Canada you're like 40 like euros for like nine pad you probably think that that is expensive it's expensive expensive like yeah friday night friday night it's been a long week it's been a long week at work but here we are you're probably gonna think that that is a bit expensive personally living in sweden that is the cost of eyeshadow like there is no affordable brands this is still more affordable than buying, for example, Anastasia Beverly Hills. Anastasia Beverly Hills is way more than $40 here in Europe, at least in Sweden, like way more. So that's why I, I didn't feel like this was like, I didn't feel like this was like Colourpop prices, but it's also not Urban Decay and Anastasia Beverly Hills prices, at least not for me. So I was expecting to get good quality. I was, I really was, because I was like, if I'm paying this amount of money, I'm expecting good quality. And I really do like these eyeshadows. I will say though that the dark mattes, not in this palette, these blend amazingly, but the two dark mattes here, the teal and the black, they are very pigmented, but you will need to take your time blending. I'm just letting you know, you need to take some extra care blending these. It is not impossible. It's totally doable, but it was this black shadow here that like, messed up my first look because I went in with a brush that was too soft and then I wasn't able to blend it out properly. So like just be aware of that that the really dark colors it needs a little care and attention but to be fair a lot of dark colors are like that but I really do like the mattes. I think that these mattes are so pretty. They also have a formula that is called like 3D metals or something. It's this one here and it's also this one in this palette. I have two 3D metals and they are both duochrome, like transparent bases with a duochrome. Let me show you how this one is. This is the one that I have uh, on my inner corners, uh, just blended in. As you can see, this is a very bright peach duochrome and in this palette it is a green duochrome. And this green you can still buy as a single as well if you don't want to by that palette and this is a very bright green duochrome so that is what these look like they're super beautiful i don't know why these are not labeled as duochromes because they are because they do have another category that they call duochromes i also want to mention they have some shimmers this one is a shimmer i'm not sure if i have any others that are shimmers but they do have a category that's also called duochromes and this is a duochrome and this is a duochrome for example this is that uh like brown teal like pinkish brown teal duochrome the shimmers are extremely intense but they're a bit flaky so you will either need to use your finger or a glitter glue or some setting spray i you're not gonna have a good time going in with these dry especially this especially especially this one Use a bit of setting spray and if you don't have that and if you don't love that, I think that even like a sponge tip applicator could help and just wetten that a bit or go in with your finger or use a glitter glue. But they are super pretty. They are super pretty, but some of them like all of the shimmery formulas that are not called shimmers this makes no sense, are a bit flaky. Uh, but I like that because it gives me a very intense result. I do have the pink here wrapped around my corner, in their corner. And I mean, I like it, but it is a matter of preference. And I really do like the mattes that I've tried so far. I've tried almost all the mattes. I haven't tried this, these two on my lid yet but I'm really excited to try them. But yeah, let me show you some swatches of these shadows and then I'll just wrap this up before we get into the looks.
Okay, so I'm really happy I got both of these palettes. I thought it was really funny just getting these together. They were so nicely wrapped and they came in a beautiful box together with the shadows that were all intact in pristine like condition. They packed them very good. They have a really good container for their loose shadows, so none of the shadows were nicked in any any way, shape or form. And Within Europe, they have a ex free express delivery if you order more than two items. And they do have liquid lipsticks as well, which means that if you order a palette and a liquid lipstick, you will get free express delivery within EU, like within Europe. And I think that, that is super cool. I actually ordered this on the release day, which was a Monday, and it got to me on Tuesday. And I have no idea what's going on in Italy, because their postal service seems to be working so good. It makes me somewhat jealous, because this like the Swedish Postal Service is like, it's tragic. It's tragical and it seems like Italy got Santa Claus to deliver their post and in Sweden we have the Grinch. And every time I've ordered something from Italy it arrived the day after. Here in Sweden it can take a month for it to be, be delivered within Sweden and Sweden is not bigger than a state in US so yeah. <sighs> Enough about that, but so far I am really impressed with these shadows. That is my impression of them after using them uh, four times. And yeah, if you are just interested in hearing my quick little thoughts about the palettes and the, this new brand, this was it. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. But if you also want to see the two looks, this being look number two, stay tuned. They are coming right now. Okay, let's get started with this look. It is cute little Boreal Lights palette by We Makeup. It looks like this. It actually has a mirror. Didn't know if I mentioned that or not, but it does. And I want to build something around this teal color. That is something you will not hear a lot on my channel because I'm actually not the biggest fan of teals, which is maybe weird, but it's just not like I don't hate them. I just never go for a teal. If I'm picking a color, teal just isn't a top choice ever. So I think I'm going to start by building this in the outer corner here and just seeing what kind of result I can get with this teal color. That is intense. I am gonna switch to a smaller brush, but I am cleaning this brush up on my Vera Mona color switch and I got my sponge on the floor, but yeah, that's nice. And I'm not having any additional color on this brush. I'm just going in blending the color that I have laid down. I love like when I'm working with bright colors or especially dark bright colors, I love like just stamping on the color where I want it to be and then gently blend the edges uh, with a smaller brush. I'm taking a little extra color to fill out this shape here because I want it to have a little bit of a cat shape. Now I'm taking a very pointed like tapered fluffy brush that's very detailed. This one is from Hakahodo. This is one of the smaller ones and I'm gonna go into this lime green and I'm gently gently gonna take a bit of this on my tip and I'm just gonna blend over the edge here ever so lightly. On that same brush I'm gonna take more of the green and I am gonna build that into the crease like this just elongating the shape up here to my upper part upper part of my inner crease but I'm not gonna take the teal in there I'm just gonna take the lime green I'm gonna use this purple shimmer here in the middle and I'm gonna put that on the pencil brush and I'm gonna spray it and I'm gonna put that on my lower lash line because like this is too dark for me to like put on my on my lid with this look but I still want to use it so I'll put it here <laughs> I'm gonna use that beautiful fuchsia pencil in my waterline again the one from Etude House and now I'm actually going to cut the crease. Oh, I can hardly open this stupid drawer. I'm actually going to use ooh, the Colourpop one again, the concealer. How is this going to work out? Not at all. See, this is why I need to declutter my foundations. Jesus Christ. 
And I am losing so much hair when I just washed my hair. Because I just did that before this video. So I'm going to use the Colourpop concealer. You see I'm almost out. And I'm going to cut my crease and I'll be back and I'll show you. Because I'm going to put some of that green duo chrome on. I think that's going to be really nice. So I'll be back to show you once this is done. Because this is just going to be a regular paint it on and then use a flat brush to perfect it a bit. Okay, so I've cut the crease like this and I am like evening out the creases that I create and when I'm trying to blend them into each other, like the concealer and the eyeshadow, I just tap over it. I feel like that is the absolute best way. So, stop it concealer. <laughs> so I am going to use now the green duochrome here. I don't know if you can see that it's a d green duochrome. It's probably going to come off um, pretty light on the concealer as well. You know what? No, actually in real life I can really see that this is the green duochrome. Uh, but I felt like this was the kind of shadow I wanted to have on. You know what? That is really pretty. I really like that shade. So I'm gonna put that on both of my lids and then I'm gonna meet up with some of the darker teal here. Ooh, I'm getting a bit of fallout. Oh wait, I got a bigger chunk here. Did I dig into the pan? Maybe. <laughs> Be careful! Okay, so this is what it looks like right now and I haven't put any of the uh, the teal, so ooh, now it, I took this one, now I'm gonna go back to the teal and I'm gonna just f fill out a bit more of the teal here out in the outer edge and meet up with this green so that we can have this as blended as possible. And now I'm taking a very detailed brush, it looks like this, I think this is actually a lip brush but I use it for eyeshadow and I'm gonna go back to the matte lime green and I'm just gonna take a bit on this brush and I'm just gonna run this over the line between the lime and the duochrome white green just to sharpen this line a bit and really make this cut crease stand out as much as possible. Okay, so I think that this is where I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna put on some mascara and I'll be right back and we can do it in the corner as well. Mascara first. Okay, so this is where I'm at right now. I'm gonna use a bit of that green duochrome, the one that we had here in, my, in the corners as well. And I am gonna use that on the pencil brush like this and I'm gonna spray it. And um, let's see if we can... Okay, so I think that is it. Let me see if I can zoom this out a bit. If I remove the mirror, you can see me. I don't really know how I'm gonna do my setup. Which one is this? Is that this one or this one? No, it's this one. Hmm, I need to think about that a bit. Where am I gonna put that? Because I wanna be able to film like this because we have the window here. I'm looking in the viewfinder and I'm wearing a sweater from work. <laughs> I'm gonna put my falsies on and I'm gonna see if I can move the lights around a bit so we don't see that situation here because I can't really film against the window when it's dark. It's not really that good, but yeah, give me one second and I'll be right back. Okay, so I think I solved it, but I don't know if I'm darker on this side now because I had to move the light a bit. You still see my hair here in the back. I honestly, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'll film like more against like Clearly I'm clueless. But yeah, that's the finished look anyways. That is the first look that I'm gonna do in this video. Ooh, it is with the um, Brios, B Brio Light, Brios? Brio Light. And I am also gonna do a look with the other palette, the one that I did myself. But this is like a tealy, limey cut crease with a purple lower lash line. I feel like this is a very fun look. It is slightly similar to some things that I've done before, but I haven't really done these kind of color combinations. Definitely not a teal because I'm not really a teal kind of girl, but yeah, that was everything for this look. Let's just get into the next one with the other palette. Okay, it's time to do a look with this palette, which is the palette that I created myself. These are the shades that I put together in a custom palette, and I am trying out a new concealer today for the first time, and I don't like it. I feel like it looks very cakey and crepey and still not really covered, so try to ignore the whole concealer situation. I am gonna do something with this dark purple and this, I think, peachy one here and then maybe the peachy duke. I wanna keep it simple. 
Like I want to do a smoky eye with just these two colors and then I want to put some of the duochrome peach over it. Keeping it simple-ish, I'm going to start with the peachy one and I am going to just blow that out in my crease. I'm going to use this fluffy bl blending brush from Wet n Wild. It doesn't have a name but it's just a fluffy blending brush that is in dire need of some cleaning. But I'm going to try the peach. I do have... Um, the Too Faced Shadow Insurance on my lid that has dried down, but I haven't set it with a powder or an eyeshadow. I don't know how I feel about this brush. I feel like it's too soft and too big. Which might feel like, not soft, but just too flimsy and too big. It's just not giving any kind of control. And I don't know how I feel about that. This is just like a clay peach. And like I said in the beginning, I was just trying to make a fall palette. And I love like a muted peach or a muted pink in the crease to begin with when I'm doing like berry looks. And this really layers good on itself. I mean, this is a look on its own. Now I'm gonna take the deeper berry shade that's down here in the corner and I am gonna use that shade to deepen this look up and to really make it a yummy berry look. And I'm gonna put this on the lid eventually as well but I'll just start with the crease because it's easier when you want to have a matte look go down on the lid as well. It's a lot easier I feel to start with the blending and then go in with the packing if you want it on the lid. Otherwise, there is a risk that you'll put on too much and you'll end up having it a bit farther up in your crease than you intended. That's why I start with the blending and then I go in with the lid color and then I do a bit more of crease blending so I don't overextend <laughs> my blending. I really have no fallout at all. I think that's pretty impressive thinking about how much I've been blending this. I actually think that that is pretty cool. So I'm gonna use the Sigma E20. This is normally the one I use to really smudge up my lower lash line, but now I'm gonna use it with a matte shadow and I'm gonna use it to really pack on matte shadow on the lid. That is the second way I love using this brush. Now I'm going back to that little brush and I'm just gently blending over a bit just to make sure that it's no harsh lines after me packing on that shadow. Again using the E20 I'm using that really dark berry shade to smudge off my lower lash line. And since I have such a crappy concealer I might just as well really blend this down so maybe I can cover up some of that crappy concealer. I'm gonna take the same brush and I'm gonna clean it a bit. Either or you can clean on tissue, I'm cleaning it on my Veramona color switch. And then I'm going in with that peach shade and I'm just putting that just under the berry shade and just blending it down a bit. So this is really smoky. Now I'm taking a clean pencil brush and I'm just going over this edge to smooth it out a bit. Smooth, smooth it out a bit. Uh, and I'm just using a small brush to make sure that I'm not carrying it even further down because I, I mean I don't want, I don't want to be a raccoon even though maybe that ship has already sailed. Let's be honest here people. Okay, so that is the look right now. Now I'm gonna use, oops, maybe I'll use the same pencil brush I just used. I'm just cleaning that again. And I'm gonna go into this peach shade and I'm gonna brighten up the inner corners and fade this into the lid a bit. Just bringing in some of the duochrominess. I'm gonna spray it when I put it in my inner corners and then I'm gonna use it without spray to fade it into my lid.
Can you see that it's just giving a bit of a fade in? I'm gonna do a bit under my eyes as well. So that's what it's looking like right now. I'm gonna do this on the other eye. I'll do some liner and some mascara. I think I'm gonna use... I pull out a white eye pen as well that seriously needs some sharpening and I'm gonna use that on my waterline and I'll come back and I'll show you how it looks before I put the falsies on. Okay, so this is the look right now. I'm gonna put some falsies on. I think I'm gonna put on some really thick ones because I really feel like that because I'm gonna do another video after this and I feel like... what was that? Forget you ever saw that. I feel like some really fierce lashes. I'll put those on and I'll be right back and we can see the finished look. Okay, so that is the finished look. I put the Lana on from Huda Beauty. I don't buy from Huda Beauty anymore. I'm taking a break from the brand while she's sorting through her drama. So I have these lashes still and they are beautiful lashes and I'm gonna use them until they are used up and I can throw them away because there's no point in not using things that I've already spent my money on. Like Huda already got my money for these and I'm gonna use them until they fall apart but I'm not gonna uh, repurchase once these are used up. But they are very dramatic and I do feel like they fit with this look. I need to buy new lashes. Like, hit me up down below. What is your favorite style of lashes? I like dramatic lashes or lashes that are spiky or lashes that are flared. Let me know, what are your favorite styles? What are your favorite brands? Because I want to buy some new lashes. I am super excited to pick some new um, things up. That was a really long and hard way to say that. This is the second look. I used the custom palette that I did from We Makeup. I hope you enjoyed these two looks. Do let me know if there's anything else you would be interested in seeing with this, this brand. I really enjoyed working with these palettes. And yeah, I hope you liked the video. I hope you liked the looks. Don't forget to subscribe. And I will see you in my next video, which will probably be tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. That's how it is here. Bye!